Hi, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We have an amazing guest, casting director Erica Bream. You might know her from shows currently Ordinary Joe on NBC, Echoes on Netflix, Tell Me Your Secrets, Alter Carbon, Revolution, Criminal Minds, so many, and the list goes on and on. She's an amazing human being. We're going to get to know her and let's have her join us. I can't wait for this conversation. Erica. Hello. <laughs> I know it's so, it's so. <laughs> Such a great performance of that introduction. It was so fun. Oh, did you like it? Thanks. Yes, I did. Thank Very you nice. so much. You know what? This is the first time we're meeting and I, yes. love, and I love doing these podcasts. You know, we used to do them in person. Now I do them obviously, you know, until maybe next year, but Sure. It's just such a great give back. And I love, you know, to give back to the actors that we work with. And, you know, you're a big totally. rooter for uh, the artists out there. And so let's get to know you. Okay. I mean, what do you want to know? I want to know everything about you. And, I, you know, <laughs> some people that are listening will probably know a lot more about you than I know about you. So let's just go. Sure. But you know, I noticed you went to USC. I, went I to did. USC. All I right. Went. Fight on. Yes. I was. Uh, yes. Go ahead. As a film student back, back in when it, it, the film school now has a completely different name than when I went there, but I was a film student there. That's amazing. So were you, before you went into casting, were you an actress first or were you always? No, I mean, not, not in any official capacity. I did, um, all of my high school plays and musicals and I loved them, but I like never anything beyond that, mostly because I just had horrible audition anxiety and that was just for my high school musical. So the, you know, I just, I didn't, I, I remember I was like, when I was 13 years old, I took an improv class and it was, it was mortifying for me. Like I, literally, I, it was, it was the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my entire life. And I was like, I'm not, I cannot do this. This is not, this is not for me. And I still feel that way, by the way, especially about improv. I cannot, I, I freak out if I have to improv during, but you're, but you're riffing with me right now. This is an improv well, and you're doing but you're, so loose and gregarious. And amazing. that's very nice. That's very nice. But if I have to do it in character at all, or within the context of the scene, forget it. I'm just, I immediately just shut down. I shut down. So I, um, I really, I loved performing though. I loved being on stage. I love collaborating, loved, love, 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 love theater so much. Um, but just didn't want to try to be an actor. <laughs> I understand. So what was the path? So you went for film school. So how did you become a casting director? Let tell us. So I started actually interning in casting right out of high school. Um, yeah. so I, yep, I, I actually went to USC as a business major, oh. but, but I can't do math to save my life. <laughs> so I didn't even last a semester in the business school <laughs> before I was like, what I really wanted to do here was film. I should just switch out. Cause I was going to, I was going to made, you know, major in business and minor in film because I needed to have a real quote unquote real career. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, so that was the, that was going to be the path. And, and I chose USC because of its film program because I wanted a minor in it. Yeah. And, um, and then after literally maybe two months of college, I was like, I don't want to do business at all. <laughs> I only want to do film. Yes. And I switched over into the film school to major. And I just, oh, it was just the best. I, you know, you, you don't need to go to film school to, to be successful in the film industry, yes. but I, man, I had such a great fucking time. Yeah, but <laughs> college, college, anything in college is the best years of your life. I'm oh a my big gosh. Promoter of having everybody go to college, not necessarily because of the education, but it's to find yourself and to oh, yeah. just get to know yourself so well, which is just going to further you in this world tenfold. Sure, totally. So your major, so you were working in casting then? Yeah. So I started, I started interning right out of high school in casting and, um, and I would, you know, sort of, I would go to a talent agency and then that talent agency would hook me up with a casting director. And then wow, I would wait, stop. How did that happen though? You were, where were you in school in high school? Were you in Beverly Hills? <laughs> no, I was, I was in North Dakota, believe it or what? not, but yes, yes. I, my, I had a grandmother in New Jersey really? and my grandmother's a teacher and she mm -hmm. was, Oh, and she never met a research challenge. She wasn't very excited by. So when I told her I wanted, I was interested in casting, which of course, you know, this, this 
I don't want to say pre-internet, but it was, it was early internet. Days. I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I didn't, I had no idea how to figure it out. I just assumed that it was something a kid, you know, working with actors and that sounded interesting. So she sort of went on a quest for me and, um, she got, she bought me a Ross report that had interviews with the top 10 casting directors for that year. And a few of them, you know, not everybody was using email back then. So a few of them had email addresses and I would email them and things like that. And so one day she called me and she said, she said, I have this friend and her brother-in-law runs a talent agency in New York city. And if you want this internship the summer after you graduate high school, all you have to do is call him and say, you're my granddaughter. And that'll be that. Amazing. And, <laughs> and she, you know, she had nothing to do with the industry at I all. She was grandmother. I love her. I know I she was, oh, she's the best. She was uh. the best. So I, I called him and I was like, hi, I'm Marion Landy's granddaughter. And she told me to call to get this internship. And he was like, great. When can you be here? Oh and I was God. like, well, I graduate the 18th. So sometime after that, he was like, great. We'll see you on the 20th. And I was like, okay. Oh <laughs> so I hopped a plane the day after graduation and stay and stay with my grandparents. And I would go into the city every day and that talent agency hooked me up with my first casting office oh. and they just sent me over and I got to run, I got to run a waiting room during a session. And I thought it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And you and, loved it. So oh you, my God. It was, it was your calling right away. Yes. Yes. So, and I tried other things. You know, I tried, I tried working at a studio. I tried working at an agency, at a talent agency. Mm-hmm. I tried working in voiceover. I tried, I tried a bunch of different things just to make sure. Yeah, sure. Um, but I always came back to it and, and it was always for me, the most interesting thing about the entertainment industry that I could find. It was why, always, why was it the most interesting thing? Cause well, it, for, for me, it's because it involved a lot of things that, that are sort of, that really f- suit my personality it involved a lot of reading. It mm. involved a lot of research, mm. you know, depending on, on the project, mm. um, well, any project really, because you're researching the people involved in the tone and things like that. Right. Um, it involved um, the organization. I'm, I'm sort of more type A than I'd like to admit, but it sort of, it involved all of the organization of being in an office. I actually really, I do not enjoy visiting set at all. Well, so, I, can I just say one thing? Because I think what people don't realize, they think that casting directors just, I mean, some people understand the sure. stuff. There is a lot of paperwork. There is a lot of technical so much paperwork. You know, stuff that you have to do yes. besides the interaction with the actor. Yes. Besides, that's the fun part. Yes, there are. I mean, it used to be back before everything, you know, started going paperless. Of course, we, our offices were just filing cabinets. I mean, we'd have huge filing cabinets everywhere we go and packing up, up to move to a new office was a nightmare. And <sighs> it was always a thing. So I, um, I just kind of, it, it sort of fit all of the different parts of my brain and my personality. Mm. And, um, even, even when you're doing paperwork, which can be of course quite mind numbing, I yeah. was never entirely bored. Yeah. Never. No, you know, it was funny. always, there was always something exciting about it where it's like, okay, by filling out this horrible paperwork, I am getting to cast this person that I've been dying to cast, or, you know, I am, I'm completing this puzzle, this overall puzzle in this very yeah, exciting way. You have like an organic innate connection to artists, to actors. So totally. They yeah. inspire you, you inspire them. Yeah. Did you, when you first started casting and you had to be the reader with the, with the actor, were you a nervous wreck? Or no, because, yes. because I learned from a bunch of casting directors who were excellent readers mm. and very unafraid to get in the actor's face. I mm. am a complete nervous wreck if I have to read a role at a table read. Yeah. To this day, I like my voice shakes. I can't, I'm a mess. 20 years in, I'm a mess. But reading with the actor, because I'm not on camera, because it's not about me, yeah. I get to just have fun. And I have borne witness to casting directors who didn't feel at all hindered by that. They, you know, they, the they push. Why did they just, why? And you, you trained under them and they sort of, they're trying to elicit a response. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not just there to say some lines and see what you do with, with your side of it. They are trying to find something honest and organic. And if that means that in this moment, they're going to get really quiet. And then the next moment they're going to 
shout at you in a very surprising way, that's what they're going to do. I just have to say that's amazing because not all casting offices. And back in my day, when I was an actor, you would go in and sometimes it didn't even look up the, off the page. Yeah, sure. Sure. And we've, think, I've heard all those stories. <laughs> I think it's changed though. I really do think it's changed. I think because of COVID there is a there is more of a camaraderie and there is like this feeling of we're not separate anymore. The casting director isn't different from the actor. We become one. Do you feel that? Yes, a hundred percent. And I think the, um, you know, people have long looked at casting directors as the barrier to their success. Mm. Like they have to get over us or past us in order to succeed that we're, we are hindering them. (laughs) Yeah. And the reality is we're, we're not, we're, we're your collaborators. We're trying we, when you succeed, we succeed. I mean, yeah. it is, you know, that's, that's how it goes. But I think with co- what COVID did was that it literally quite literally brought us into each other's homes. Yes. So it, people got to see us as real human beings. They got to see us as not just this person, this intimidating person standing behind a camera you know, it's, waiting yeah. to cue you for your line. Well, it's, you know, yep. And, and that's the positive note from COVID because I know when I was an actor years ago and there was no internet, sure. you got your phone call. You had to drive to 20th century Fox at 11 o'clock <laughs> at night to pick up your material. Right. And, you know, you're shaky. You have to have the page in your hand. And <laughs> it was a two sisters. Maybe because I was an actor then, I felt so much more nerves. Now I'm on the other side is the give. And here's the message that I got from you too, because you're not good at improv, but you're good at giving when it's not about you. And I think there's a message here for actors. If they make their material about the give as well, it's probably going to go so much better for them. Oh yeah. Well, I'm telling that that to actors all the time because I think self-taping has exacerbated the um, feeling that it is about you right? When every single scene is about the other person and what do you want from the other person, right? It's, it's, it's how it's always been. It just, when, when you're self-taping, it really feels like this is about me. How do I look? How's my eye line? How do I, you know, how, how are my eyebrows, you know, whatever. And, and so it's hard to sort of go back to the, the roots of your technique, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and just be like, this isn't about me. This is about this other person. How can I, put that, how can I make sure that connection is coming through? And you know what? Do you feel that when that person does that in person or on tape, it's the game changer. Oh yeah. It's the thing that gets you to go, ah, Mm -hmm. I want to hang with that person. I want to bring that person back. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. What would be like, are you, um, I'm a big behavioralist, uh, acting coach and I love just a little bit to, to, you know, each scene should be a little bit different. And I have people testing all the time because I really feel like that little other element, that third dimension. So you need your emotional life, your, beha- your uh, environmental life, just with your eye line, but that little bit of behavior. Do you agree with that? Are yes. You- oh yeah, totally. You know, the, again, I think with self-taping, there's so many other and, and virtual casting mm-hmm. as well. You know, when you're auditioning over zoom or something like that, um, there's so much tech to think about that I think it really knocks people out of their their acting technique zone. Yeah. And and if you have lost your connection to your character's humanity, then why should we, the viewer, care? Mm-hmm. Right. And and so you know, allowing your emotional truths, your emotional life to be there, your you know the depth of your emotional life to be there the behaviors, you know, as you're talking about things like that, it's really, really meaningful. And that's also what makes your tape different than the next person's. If everybody's just doing exactly what's on the page, 100%. I get 30 identical tapes. It's boring. Yes. Eyeballs. You want to have that person that's so different. Yes. So can I just ask you though, really, I'm just segueing because that's how my mind works. Sure. And I just went to when we were talking about self-tapes, because it's not only about self-tapes. It's, it is at the end of the day, it's about your work as an actor, but yes. Um, I think fortunately you guys out there get to do self tapes. If I was still an actor, oh my God, it's just like a blessing beyond. But I want to talk about the slate because I have a lot of actors that are just like, how is that slate? How's I go, fuck this. I don't think the slate is going to get you this. Pr- it's not. Fuck this is the exact right attitude about your really? slates, by the way. Yes, that yes, is that is a hundred percent the right attitude. Cause Sherry, you remember, you remember what slates used to be. You hold up a piece of paper with your name on it. <laughs> And that's it, right? Like 
remember doing slaves. I don't, I think that was, no. I don't even well, know that. well, because also, right. Like you only, we only, you started using slates when people started recording auditions, yeah. which didn't happen immediately. I remember I had, had a ton of producer sessions where we never taped anything because people in the room made the decision. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So, so slates only started happening with tapes. And, and as I said, they used to be, you just held up a piece of paper with your name on it so that people knew your you assistant were. when, yes, when your assistant, when they're cutting up the tape, yeah. this actor is this person. And that's yeah. what it is. And that's all slates still are, even though you Thank have to- you. Thank you. Because even though you have to say different just, things, it's oh. just an identifier. That's it. Yeah, because I'm like, what is this? Like a judgment? I have to see your body? What the what the f? You know what I mean? Oh, the, oh, and yes. the thing is, you know, with 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 the full body, that anything that we're asking for in a slate has a purpose. We're not just trying to like give you homework for the sake of homework, right? Like, it's, it's not just checking a box. But like the full body thing is because with a self tape, we're only seeing the upper one fifth of your body, one fourth of your body, the full body is just for perspective. It's not to drive you insane. It's not to make you embarrassed about your apartment decor. It's not any of those things. So if you can find a way to do it in a way that feels comfortable, which I'm so glad people have figured out the side-by-side slate of like, this is a still photo next to my face talking about all the things you want me to say. Oh, I I didn't even know about that. What? Oh, it's great. It's just a fabulous solution. But the, um, but that's what people I think freak out about. They, they also freak out about memorizing all the things they have to say in their slates. When I'm like, this, this is, this can be a call and response thing, right? Like when I slate people in my office, I say, okay, tell me your name and how tall are you? And can you turn for both profiles? And where do you, where are you based? And I'm asking the questions. Great. Great. So, so that's the thing is that like, they're, they're not going to get you the job. Totally. Right. At the end of the day, oh. it's about the work. It's about the yes. choice. You make. It's a how good yes. you are for that role and fitting into the pieces. Yes. I beg of you people, please stop freaking out about your slates. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy. I mean, people stress out about them. I and know. Right, I know. I've seen it. it. When, when they listen to this, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pleased about that. So now I just want to talk about, because people ask about chemistry testing online on Zoom. Sure. Yeah. And, and actually, so now you send out auditions, people send in, you get more tapes than ever. You look mm-hmm. at them, you know, mm-hmm. lucky you get to do it from your bed, whatever you get to show, <laughs> have a glass of wine, look at the taste, whatever. <laughs> but when you make your decision and you're calling the actors back, what does the callback look like on Zoom? Can we give like a little bit of an example? Sure. It's, you know, and it, it, it's too, it depends on the producers more than anything else. Right. right. Um, the, the, the great thing, I mean, for better, for worse, is that everybody has gotten very, quite comfortable on zoom. And so our producers are significantly less awkward about it than sometimes they even are in the room because they can turn their cameras off. Yeah. You know, you know how some producers just in casting, they're just a little weird, right? Well, they're a little they're uncomfortable. Like- they won't look you in the eye. They don't want to shake your hand. <laughs> Well, I never shook hands, but I can only go by the fact that people uh, have different things that are going on in their life during that day and the different pressures and the stress, or they had a fight at home or whatever, and they don't want to engage. They just want to be invisible. So I hear you. Right, right. So I think not only have people gotten comfortable with Zoom, but they've gotten comfortable with the fact that they can watch an actor without the actor watching them. And it has made them more excited, more enthusiastic to be involved in casting than it's, than I've had in a while. Ooh. Um, for the most, for, so my last like real producer session with producers in the room for an actual full session yeah. Yeah. was in 2014. What? Everything has been on tape since then. Everything because oh. a, the tape quality has gotten so good, but B, because the producers have so many other things to do yeah. that they don't have time to sit in casting. But now with Zoom, because A, they can live wherever they want to live. It doesn't matter if their kids are home with them, whatever, they can they can join in. Yeah. So so they have gotten a bit more enthusiastic about it again than I've dealt with previously with live sessions. It's amazing. And um, and so the the biggest thing is that everybody tries to make everybody feel comfortable because we know this is weird, right? Like this 
this so, this is weird. <laughs> okay, but let me just let me just go back. So you get the call back. Yes. You get your Zoom time. Yes. You're gonna click in, and the, it'll probably say you'll be led into the waiting room. Yes. Yes. And yes. Go ahead. And so from there, you know, different casting offices have different ways of going from there. I know that there are some casting offices that do a sound and, and camera check, mm. and then they give you a different link to go into the actual waiting room, whatever. I don't do that. I, <laughs> I make myself available to the actors the day before or the morning of, if they want to jump on zoom with me, just to meet me, if we haven't met before oh or That's read through incredible. it with me. Yeah. Cause we're doing this again. Remember this, this is not every single person. It's not like an old, old fashioned live session. This is a very small handful of people. So I want to make sure because this is weird, because it can feel quite solitary mm-hmm. that the actor A understands the technology and what they need to do with it. But B has the opportunity to ask me questions, to see my face and know that I'm going to to have somebody familiar pop in, you know, when, when the time comes. Um, so I do that with them. It could be a work session or just a chat, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, and then when the time comes, I say to my producers, okay, are you ready for so-and-so? And we let that person in and we wait while they connect to the audio and do whatever else oh needs God. to happen. Okay. So let me just ask you. So when they come on, would it be just like, you're in my gallery? So it's me and you. Yeah. Or, and it, is it just you as the casting director or is it everybody? It's everybody, unless the actor has told me ahead of time that they want to start the scene right away without chatting first. If it's a, you know, like the olden uh, days, if it's a deeply emotional scene or whatever, and they've done their work and they want to just start, then we'll, then we'll get right into it. And so the producers will start with their cameras off, and but so, otherwise they're starting with their cameras on their mics on. They all say hello. For the most part, they'll introduce themselves and okay. wave and be like, I'm the director. I'm the producer. I'm the creator, whatever. Nice. Um, and, uh, and then we, you know, it, it's sort of up to, to me that to be the facilitator right so i'll director of it the cast yeah yeah. right so i'll say okay do you have any questions actor for us no director do you have anything you want to say before we start no okay you can all turn your cameras and mics off actor we're about to start this is your if i'm the reader this is what you need to do to pin me you know whatever so you just you do tell them to pin you or to Mm -hmm. pin themselves or whatever that's going to be yep okay Yep. And, um, and then, and then we do it. And sometimes I've, I've done it a couple of ways. One, um, I've gotten a reader on, um, but a lot of times I just do the reading myself, mm-hmm. you know, so that again, they've got somebody familiar there. Um, the, and then once the, once that scene is done, the director pops back on and then so, some of the producers stay off, but you know, yeah. some of them all pop back on and they weigh in if they've, if they've got a note, if they're all like, I'm good. Anybody else need anything? Let's move on. Oh, that's amazing. So they'll actually come back on. So you yep. have some visual feedback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's because otherwise it's just this, we're all just waiting in the ether. Like, hello, is <laughs> anything happening? Anybody? Whatever. And there's always that awkward delay thing where we're, the scene ends and I'm like, okay, let's wait for the director to come back on <laughs> or, or director, you're still muted or, you know, whatever. Um, they're, you know, but we're all just doing the best we can with it. And for the most part, some people, some people do struggle with it. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's the truth because it is, it is stressful. It's a, all of your normal audition nerves and audition stresses coupled with the stress of, oh my gosh, this is a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've got my tech stuff to worry about. And what if my tech stuff doesn't work? And, you know, what if my Bluetooth doesn't connect and, you know, all this other stuff. Yeah. So, which is really, I think, acceptable in these, in these times, like if yes. you have a little glitch, it's kind of endearing. Yes. Don't totally. You see the truth of a totally. person's personality and how they deal with things, you know? Yes. I, well, I the most darling tech issue I was, we were doing a final callback with, with two young guys to be a series regular and what, this one, he just could not get his AirPods to connect to the Bluetooth. Yeah. And he, he was scrolling through and you could see him just trying to do all these different things. And finally he was like, I'm a millennial. I should be able to figure this out. <laughs> and just his like charm of his it's, unknowingness, just, just put everybody at ease. And, and I think you said something really important. It's the charm because if yes. a actor doesn't get stressed out, but has yes. the ability to laugh at themselves and stays yes. loose, then I think, you know, on set, 
Yes. That that's a good hire. They're not going to stress. They're not going to yes. cause chaos. You want the smoothness. Yes. For sure. I do have a question because mm -hmm. in the old days or well, yes. for you a really long time ago when you were having people come in, but you know, mm -hmm. you used to have in my day, which is a longer time ago, but you would have like a, you know, just even a general, a quote general. Sure. And then you get called in, or even if you had that pre-read, you would meet the actor and get to know them and kind of hang out and be able to like absorb their little bit of their personality and their vibe. So you could go, yeah, he's he or she there or they, they're good to get called back for this. How do you make that judgment from an actor you've never met? How do you weigh that out? So it's, it's, that's a sort of an uh, up to us to do our job, frankly, you know, and, and if we need to do that due diligence, how, how can we do it? Right. Do they have a body of work, which is off, you know, often there's at least something there, whether it's a resume and or a reel, or we're, we're meeting with them, or we're talking with people who have worked with them in the past, okay. um, which I've done specifically with, with kids, mm -hmm. right. Um, I, when we were hiring, uh, he was, 16 at the time he'd only done one other thing <laughs> and we were hiring him to be a series regular Lucky. and Lucky. and so we reached out to that production and and or to that producer mm -hmm. and we were like hey can you can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to work with him and you know whatever and that writer wrote us an email the producer mm -hmm. wrote us an email mm -hmm. we we got all kinds of notes just with that one little ask about what it was like to work with this kid. And, and they all glowed about him, of course, and he ended up booking it. Now he's kind of a big deal, but um, now that he's 21. Okay. Um, you want to say, or are we keeping that a secret? I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it a secret. Just okay, fine. We you like know, whatever. Secret. But secret he's, a, yes, but he's, he, he's great. And, and so, so it's up to us to do that kind of work, right? Oh, Where so basically it doesn't matter. It didn't throw you from getting to no. know the person in person at all. No, if the person is nailing their audition consistently like that, then it's, it's working. Yeah. And if there's concern, cause there, there can be concern if somebody doesn't have any real credits or has never, it's, it's, you know, new to, to the market in the United States or whatever yeah. has maybe had a slight bad reputation in the past. And you want to see if that's still an issue, you know, it's up to us to, to, do that due diligence to do that research and, you know, make sure that this really is the person who on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be great to work with both creatively and from a, you know, professional standpoint. And what would those qualities be to you that you can imbue upon actors who are listening? What um, resonates for you? Well, listening is, is okay. definitely number one, you know, how, what, how do they take notes? Mm -hmm. You know, do they take them in and nod and say, yep, got it. And then don't adjust. Are they able to quietly listen and then absolutely adjust? Mm -hmm. Um, so even if they're a little bit shy and standoffish, they, they can get there and, and they get there quickly. Um, or are they new and it, it takes them a minute to get there, you know, and, and that's something we need to be aware of. Are they, um, you know, uh, they they might be super fast at memorizing lines, which could be great, but if they can't make an adjustment, then, you know, that's, it's only one, one of their, their tricks. Mm -hmm. So, so we're looking at what is it, what is it like to work with them first and foremost as a creative collaborator? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, and, and nearly as important, how are they professionally, you know, are, how are they behaviorally, are they, do they show up on time? Do they, you know, do they listen? Do they work well with their other actors? You know, the, those kinds of things. Um, those are all important qualities, but, but the, the biggest note, you know, cause with self-taping, we don't know what take that was. That could be your hundredth take. That you hundred percent. <laughs> so we need to make sure that it wasn't your hundredth take. Your that, first or second. Right. That you can, and, and even if it was, which we hope it wasn't, yeah. can you, can you take a note and, you know, can you, can you get there more quickly? Yeah. Um, so, so it is up to us to do that, that work. And, and we can often see that relatively quickly, a, either in us directing you or in getting feedback from other, you know, from our peers, right. other directors, casting directors, producers, things like that. Um, 
but I have checked up on a number of people like that where we knew we needed this person. And it's always people that you're hiring in a large capacity, right? Like right. the series regulars, the leads, the the major recurs, like this, these are people you're going to be with for a large portion of time. Yes. Like how are they to work yes. with? Are yeah. you going to make your days right. with this person? And I have some people call me back and be like, they're really kind. They're absolutely lovely. It took some work to get them there. Mm. And that's important to know. That's important when we're doing things virtually and we don't have the immediacy. Okay. That was the note that this person gave about, about this actor. Let me see what it's like to work with mm. them. Mm. That's so really we, important. I have to just interject in my classes. Yeah. In my audition classes, we do that. It is all, and I drill it into the actor's heads. It's all about the adjustment. Just take the adjustment, even if you don't agree, even if you think this is the most ridiculous adjustment, just do it and do it with ease and do it with a positive attitude. Yes. Yes. Right. It is. It is very frustrating to give a note and have an actor look at you like, that's a bad note. <laughs> Frustrating but, that to me yes. would make it like you did not get the role just now because you yes. have a bit of an attitude. Yes, it is it's it's super frustrating. And this has happened to a lot of casting directors, especially, you know, I, I started my career very, very young. And and you so, still look young to me. So I don't bless know. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I, just, I just had a I just had a birthday, so I'm a little older <gasps> than, I, than I was two days ago. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday. Birthday. Thank birthday. you. Happy Thank birthday. you. Yes. Um, so you know, I started really young and I I really struggled to feel like actors would take me seriously when I would give them a note oh, because I looked like the baby in the room. Oh. Um, and if I was the only person in the room, then they really looked at me like I didn't know what I was doing. And so that, that was always really hard for me. And I think, I think a lot of, I know a lot of other casting directors who also started as young people, particularly young women. Oh. And, and they went through the same thing where it's like, some actors are amazing. And I, I was always, I always cherished the, especially the, the older actors, the actors who were over 60, mm. who when I was 25 and I would give them a note, they took me completely seriously <sighs> and they would adjust and they would thank me for the note and whatever. And it just, it felt like, oh my God, you you're validating me as a collaborator. And it was yes. so meaningful. And then I would get a 30 year old actor in there who I would give them a note and they'd look at me like I was insane. And like, yeah, I didn't so, know anything. It's so bad on their part part for even having a judgment because it, right. it, it is so subjective acting it's yes. it is a collaboration and it's subjective so what their choice could be totally opposite yeah and be, you, stay yeah. open stay malleable stay flexible stay, yes and that's the thing is that you know we we are far more intimate with the project than you right we 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 you may not even get to see a script but we get to see the script but not only that we're having concept meetings. Yeah. So the character may have evolved beyond the script or beyond the sides. And you haven't gotten that information because it's not out yet, or we aren't allowed to give it out or whatever. And we're trying to get you there, even, even though it's not on the page. Yeah. And, and, and so you do have to trust, you have to trust. And, you know, we don't always give perfect notes. Directors don't always give perfect notes either, but you know, if we can get there eventually together, then that's all we need. That's, yeah, that's wonderful. Now I'm gonna have this question when actors, cause in the past I would tell actors, if you're having a bad start, just do it again. But I sort of changed my mind. I sort of feel like don't waste anybody's time. Time is of the essence, just freaking deal with it. Take a pause and get yourself back on track. What is your point of view on that? Yeah, I think, you know, that the, the worst thing you can do is apologize and beat yourself up for yeah. it, right? Especially mid-scene. <laughs> right? Like, if you're, if you're going to stop and start over, then just own that and be like, you know what? I'm sorry. I got to stop and start over. Or you don't have to apologize. Be like, yeah. you know what? I need to start over. Fine. Yeah. Great. Do it by all means. But if but you better are able, be better. you better right, be better. Right. If you are able to do what you just mentioned, Sherry, which is take a, a, a moment mid scene and snap yourself back into place. That's like watching magic happen in front of your eyeballs. It is, it is bonkers to see somebody just, they're going off the rails and then they just bring themselves back. I mean, talk mm -hmm. about control of your craft. It is impressive. Yeah. So that's the thing is that like, you know, when, when it happens and it happens, by God, it, you, you're not a machine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? Like, of course it happens. You can't, if you are sitting there beating yourself up for it, 
you're not going to get anywhere. We're just going to go deeper and deeper into the cycle of you losing your mind over what's going wrong. Yeah. And it's, and it's hard to watch and it's, it is hard to break people out of it once it starts. And do you, how, what do you, what are your tactics that you use to help break them? Because to me, if you're really caught up at the end of the day, of course, it's you in the imaginary circumstances with your personalization. It's a combination, Mm -hmm. but when, if you're really caught up in the want and then really have rehearsed and understanding the character's relationship back and forth, you have tactics. So you have to be busy. Yeah. I think it's when people have that little out of body experience and they come out of themselves and they sponge to the people pleasing, they're yeah. effed up. Yep. Completely, completely. And for me, the only way to break it mm-hmm. is to truly break the moment and mm-hmm. to be like, okay, stop breathe mm-hmm. you've said because because what happens is it's a physical response that happens yeah. right like when yeah. as soon as you go yep as soon as you go out of your body and into your head you aren't breathing properly because you've stopped paying attention to that your you, your muscles are starting to tighten because you're freaking out right so your whatever's tightening could be your jaw could be your shoulders could be your could be anything so for me the only way to stop it is to look at the actor and be like okay stop breathe. Let's take a big, deep breath together in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now shake out that energy. Cause it, cause it's it literally, you like start to oh. like claw up your hands, right? Yes. Yes. You, gotta, you have to release those muscles a little bit. So if that means just kind of bouncing on your toes or shaking out your hands or just laughing at you know, yourself, yes, <laughs> anything. And yeah. just, you know what? I try to remind actors in that moment as they're coming down from the physical response of like, you're safe here. You're with friends. We're having fun. Just take a breath and let's go again. Yeah. And, and is it always perfect after that? No, but is it better? Hopefully. Yes. Well, hopefully, but hopefully it doesn't happen because honestly you have to have, I think it's the actor's job to make you feel confident in choosing them to be part of the show that's already on the air. Sure. Totally. But you're humans. Right. And, and it's very easy to go into that spiral of like, Oh, I'm fucking up now. Oh, and oh my God. Yes. And it happens to everybody, even superstars. Yes. They have their, awesome- Oh my God. But yes. if you can laugh at yourself, cause at the end of the day, what you said in your, on your website, I look, it said, I'm, I'm happy person. I'm happy. You said yes. something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, I love her already because I'm the biggest believer in the positive path. I wrote a book called the positive path for actors, but yeah. that mindset is so important. It relieves you. The minute you smile or you take that choice of being happy, all that tension goes away. Oh yeah. And it's the tension that stops actors from, from booking the roles. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Think of all the things that you block as soon as you get tense. Yeah. You're not connecting with anybody else because you're, 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 the voices in your head are going a million miles a minute, you know, And, and it's all normal. It's all human. And it's, it's going to happen even if to, to the greatest actors, as you mentioned, you know, it's everybody has those moments. They have those days. So they do you just have, have to find a way to make sure that it's, that you can break out of it. That's not your norm. Mm-hmm. Can we go back to the self tape question for a yeah. second? Yeah. Um, so people invest in their lighting. I'm in my yes. little taping studio at my sure. studio and you know, the lights change. Like I, like I can see that it was a little bit lighter and then a little bit yellow, but I'm not whatever, whatever. Right. <laughs> but when people are doing self tapes, sometimes they don't have the lighting set up. Does that defer your, I don't even know if that's the right word, but your, um, the quality of the tape, does that, do you still watch? No. Like, do, yes, okay. of course. Of course we will. We just need to be able to see you and hear you. That's all. So it doesn't. All. Really so fun. no. And and frankly, if you can get your tape done during daylight hours with natural daylight, that's the best light there is. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so you know, it's just it's it's just that your taping time is not always conducive to natural daylight. Yes. And natural daylight shifts, of course. So so that you know the beauty of having lights as you do a lighting setup is that you can control when you do your self tape yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. you know, you don't have to be right by a window. And- but like if you don't have the ability, the availability and you just do it with, you know, a blank wall behind you, it's totally fine. Right. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Of I course. just, Absolutely. I think it's fine. I'm just telling, I just want them to hear it. Yes. Me. It is a million percent fine. And I think, you know, we casting directors don't want you to spend money 
mm. on on auditioning. We're not we're not advocating that. This this self taping has come up for a whole host of reasons, mostly livability, mm-hmm. right? As, and during COVID, safety. Yeah. yeah, we are not looking for you to spend a ton of money to do it. it should, we, we're, we want everybody to have access the same way that you would if we had, we were able to bring you into rooms. Yes. Um, do people like to do it because it gives them some control because they can set it up and know it's going to look good and they feel good about that and whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. But you don't need to spend money to do it. You can, you can use a blank space in, in your house. You can use your phone. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need... I mean, frankly, I, I think the one thing everybody should use is a tripod just to make your life easier, but you don't even need that. You can stack your phone on stuff and just, you know, say a little prayer. Like it's fine. <laughs> and the tripod is so easy for the iPhones. It's so easy. Oh, totally. And they're cheap. Yeah. So and cheap. they're, you know, it's just, it, like I said, that, that is the one thing that can really drive you crazy is the balancing act of, you know, how do I balance my phone at the right angle? But, um, you know, if you're, if you're going to spend $15 on anything self-taping, that would be a great investment. I agree. But, um, I agree. But you also don't have to, you yeah. know, you, you can, you can totally figure it out with what you have and, um, say, and make it work. I agree with everything you're saying, but I think any element that can, can lift your confidence level up. Then yes. You see that. yes, for sure. And I think, like I said, the, the tech aspect can really throw you for a loop during when you're self-taping. And yeah. if you can get into a rhythm of not having to think about the tech, this is my setup and I know where it is and I know how to use it, the end, yeah. then you can easily go back to focusing on the character work. So there there are definitely some, some benefits to mm-hmm. investing and feeling confident in your tools, mm-hmm. your physical tools. Yeah, I agree, 100%. I wanna go back now to this question, the chemistry read. Because sure. a lot of actors... Um, are like, what happens on Zoom from a chemistry read? And can you describe what a chemistry read used to be like in person and a test, which is so different Yes. now? And yes. let's talk about the chemistry read and the actual test of an actor. Because I think yes. that's a lot of information that people don't know. Yes. So, so chemistry read comes down to, of course, the chemistry between two actors, mm-hmm. sometimes more than two actors. Sometimes if it's a group that needs to work, it's three or four, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's usually two and it's often romantic. <laughs> so, um, so we need to make sure that, that they gel, that they vibe, that the one actor isn't looking at the other actor thinking like, I would never date this person. Yeah. You know, like you, you just, you need to make sure that there's something that there's a spark there, whether it is like I said, romantic, which is often the case, or or um, from this is a team that works together or something like that, whatever. Um, So oftentimes in chemistry reads, um, one person already has the job. So Mm -hmm. that person is already set and we're chemistry reading other actors with them to see who has the spark with them. Mm -hmm. So in which case that actor is reading with their possible counterparts. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, at the end of the day, it is ultimately an audition for the person who is auditioning, not for the person who's already been cast. Mm -hmm. So we will sometimes um, choreograph them in a way where they, we might be shooting over the shoulder of the person who's already been cast so that the camera gets the auditioning actor. This is in person. This is in in person. Um, Or we are, we're finding a way to put them in a scene together so that we can make sure that the camera catches enough of the person auditioning Mm -hmm. while also getting the chemistry. So we're looking, we're looking at them as this person is auditioning. And also we need to see how the chemistry goes with, with so, the person who's already cast. So if it was a chemistry read in the room, it would mm-hmm. be you, all the executive producers, producers, writer, well, producers, yes. writers, um, and the director and the actor, one actor who has the role and one who's auditioning. Yes. And then when is it, I mean, obviously I know the answer, but you should definitely be off book. You should be yes. in your behavioral life. Yes. So will they be up there together or it's one-on-one? Yes, they'll usually be up there together. Um, the the actor who has already been cast can sometimes move around a little. They can put their back to the camera without worrying, you know, stuff like that. Right. Um, we try to just make sure that, like I said, the actor auditioning is always cheated toward the camera. Yeah. Okay. That, so that we are filming them, we can all actually see them because they are the ones auditioning for the role. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, they, it, this this is a high level audition. So at this point, they've probably been through round one, round two, maybe round three. And what would that and, round be? Hold on. 
Because people, some people know, I know, but some sure. people don't know. So what would sure. you- it could, I mean, it could be anything, but it could be a pre-read or a self-tape. Right. It could be a work session. It could be a director session, producer session. There are a whole host. All of them. Yes. yes. Because there are a whole host of steps that could come before that chemistry read. The chemistry read is done between the actor who's cast and like two, three, maybe four final options and is that something like that if there's a test deal or sometimes there's not a test deal is there sometimes always- we do the test deal before the chemistry read because the chemistry read is going to serve as the test ah. sometimes the chemistry read comes before the test and, and so they might not even have a test deal just a chemistry read and then we it out if it works and you get the test deal and you go one step further to closing the deal correct correct so, so on- the yes. yeah so on zoom mm-hmm. again the number one thing we're looking at is the chemistry between these actors, between mm. these two actors. And what I think people think is impossible to do is to find chemistry when you're not in the same room together. And it, it, I'm here to tell you, I in a hundred percent. We've got time, great chemistry. We do, Sherry. Um, okay. <laughs> we do. So you can a hundred percent find chemistry with somebody over Zoom. A hundred percent. And, and similarly, when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing as an in-person yeah. chemistry yeah. read. Sometimes there's just no chemistry. There's just However, some... I think <laughs> actors should be smart in their chemistry because you can substitute and bring out your own sexuality and chemistry and feed it into the other person. If you're smart, you would be amazed at how delicious crackly chemistry reads you can see over zoom you would be shocked yeah because when it works it works and you those of us watching us viewers right we're the voyeurs yeah. more than viewers even we're, we're like oh shit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you, wow. it's just it's just undeniable when it clicks it clicks yeah. and so you know the um and i just want to take a step back for a second yeah. because because like i said the chemistry reads between somebody who's already been cast and people who are auditioning is that always the case no so oh. what what the the difference between that and everybody who's auditioning and we're trying to find the right matches mm-hmm. is called a mix and match so a mix and match is a chemistry read where nobody has yet been cast and we're trying different groups or different pairs or whatever. So we've got, let's say four people for this role and four people for this role. And we are, okay, this is one pair. This is another pair. This is another pair. Okay. Now let's keep this person, bring in a, a person from this pair, whatever we're mixing and matching because nobody is set yet. So that's, you're looking for chemistry. It's the same thing, but Most, nobody has the job yet. But it wouldn't be called a chemistry read. It no, would be, be called, I mean, somebody might use that term, but it's a mix and match is what we're doing. We're, we're mixing up the groups to see where the right match is. Got it. Because I have a client that has a chemistry read next week or, or actually over the weekend. So that means someone's been cast and she's down to the wire. Yes. And so she will likely be reading with that person who's been cast. Yeah. Okay. Um, it could be that somebody's misusing that term, of course, and nobody has been cast and it is indeed a mix and match, but you know, but it's the same idea, right? Is that you're looking for chemistry. Where, where is the chemistry lying? You know, is it between this pair or this pair? It's the same idea. And so on a chemistry read on zoom. So you go in the gallery view, it's you and the other person. Do you Mm -hmm. guys do you run the sessions like get to like talk for a second or you just go right into the material? We go, we usually go right into it. Again, I try to make sure that the actor auditioning, so not the person already cast, but the actor auditioning knows who they're reading with, who the actor is. I give them, if there's anything that I need to tell them about that actor, about their, their tone or whatever, I Mm. tell them, you know, just so that they know what they're going into. Cause they don't, a live chemistry read, there is a, there is time for the two actors to meet to walk off, to read the scene together for a second, just to sort of talk about like, this is where I would like to come up for a kiss. Are you okay with that? They're able to talk about those things. Um, Whereas with a Zoom chemistry read, A, they're not gonna kiss because obviously, but um, there there just isn't that space to be able to do that. So, So I try to make sure that the auditioning actor is completely informed about who this person is, what their vibe is, you know, whatever, so that there's just nothing shocking about it. Um, because at the end of the day, what they need to do in that chemistry read is they need to connect to that person. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're at all thrown off by anything, there's, they're not connecting. Yeah. You know, so, um, and, and sometimes, you know, I've been in chemistry reads where the actor who's been cast mm-hmm. is 
is actually actively trying to throw the other actor off. Really? To, yes, because it well in in a creative way, not oh, not so. in a not in a like right. mean gonna, hearted. Yeah, speak. not I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear not in a dickish way. way. No, right, but in a way to just sort of elicit yeah. a response. Yes, right yeah. to yes. to it's of course if the scene calls for it, right? Yeah. Um, I we did a chemistry read on altered carbon and that Joel Kinnaman was cast and he was reading with women and um he would you know he's very tall he's very very tall (laughs) um but so he would kind of get close to these women and hover over them and you know in this very intimate because it was a very combative scene super combative but it of course had the sexual tension and you know all the things that is and um and he would just kind of loom over them and it would cause them to react physically some way or another where they would either push him yeah or they would they would sort of physically pull their bodies up or they would step back in a way and so it was just a really interesting way to see he was he was eliciting a response he was trying to elicit a response and um it was it was just fascinating to watch they're always so fascinating to watch especially live you know but um over zoom the the point is to connect Mm. and who has the deepest connection in a way where the the actor who's been cast sort of loses their breath they lose their space they lose what they're doing for a second because they're taken with what you're doing yes Yes. I think it's very helpful. All actors during this time should be, I mean, obviously we have classes here like that, but to be on Zoom and to get used to it because there's different, Yes, you could go in close and really talk in close and then you can step back. You can raise your, you know, your stuff. So you have that box is pretty big. Yes, for sure. For sure. There's, there is a lot more room to move, to connect, to breathe and to, to, to be with someone in an intimate way, even though, this is the format. Mm. So at the end of the day, comfort, yes, focused, you know, being loose, not brain surgery, connection, mm. connection, collaboration. Yeah, totally. You are so amazing. I have enjoyed <laughs> it so much. Before we end, can you give three little pieces of inspiration to the, all the actors, artists listening out there about what they should do on this path? That's not an overnight path. Yes, I, I think... Make sure you hold on to your joy. Mm. It's very easy to get frustrated, to get, to feel sort of beaten down or like you're stuck or hitting a wall or you're sending self tapes into the ether and not hearing anything. And so you're getting frustrated. Um, And you got into this for a reason. Mm. And if you can hold on to that reason and, and you'll lose it sometimes. And so if you lose it, how can you, how can you find it again? Mm. Is it going and sitting in a dark theater and seeing a delicious play? Is it Mm. watching an amazing performance on TV? Is it doing scene study or getting back into a class? Like what is that thing that sort of reconnects you relights your fire? Because if you don't have that joy, then you're just going through a motion of grinding away and Mm. and you're losing the spark Mm. and the spark is what makes you interesting it's what Mm. makes you You. interesting as a human but also interesting as a performer and it's just very common to lose sight of it and so however you can bring it back and especially you know these days there are so many societal stressors (laughs) (laughs) Wow. <laughs> with we're still in, we are still in a pandemic yes. um there are you know frustrating things online there are frustrating politics there are all kinds of things and it is easy for those things to also sit on your spark and 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 crush your soul a little bit and so okay when you're feeling that what do you need to do to regain the control of your joy to bring it back Mm. And it could be that you need to go off social media for a week. It could mm. mean that you mm. need to not talk to that person who always riles you up <laughs> politically, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just, you want to make sure that if you're, if you're not having fun doing this thing, then what's the point? Yeah. You know, so, so make sure that you are, you're always coming back to that. Even when you, you can recognize that it's gone. How can you come back to it? 
Beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on, you guys. We are rooting for you out there. Stay yes. calm, stay aggressive in and believe in yourself. Just believe in yourself and do the work. Do your study your craft. Erica, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. You're so amazing. Thank you so much for coming on, you guys. Take a listen and we're out. Thanks, guys. All right.